uh, Excellency, um, uh, U.S. Ambassador, and um, all of our uh, friends and colleagues who are on this call, uh, and of course the Mandela Washington Fellows, uh, congratulations to you all uh, as being selected as fellows and also for the very great work uh, that you're doing. And we must commend the U.S. government also for keeping the dream of Yali alive. Uh, but listening to the leaders of the three tracks and the great work that they lead is evidence that we're listening today to Africa's uh, most exciting story, at least certainly Nigeria's most exciting story. The story of a present and a future that uh, could be stared by our by our nation's incredibly talented and optimistic young men and women. The innovation, the creativity and thoughtfulness that I've seen in the different projects that you have developed is evidence of your belief and confidence in the future of this country and indeed in the future of the continent. And I took uh, time to look uh, at all of the projects uh, that um, have been done in a, you know, a very large number of them, the uh, different profiles, I read through all the profiles and, and I'm really quite uh, taken, I mean, I'm really quite overwhelmed by just the sheer range and the depth of what has been done. And, and this, in, in my view, is the best news possible, the news of great hope and enthusiasm about the future. Hope is the fuel of progress and prosperity. And I think that every generation has a responsibility to itself and the future to believe enough in its own abilities and God-given resources to build uh, societies where people can live their lives in peace, uh, in joy, and in prosperity. But within any generation, only a few wholeheartedly take on that challenge, the challenge of building society. Most believe that the task is for someone else and that such endeavors cannot even pay the bills anyway. So let me say to you that you may not know this, but those of you who are so active in these uh, various not-for-profit causes belong to a small club of those ready to pay the price to see their countries and communities grow. So you are individually and collectively nation builders. And that is what public service is about. You are young public servants, even, even if you are not in government employment. But I want to say something which may, uh, of course, turn out to be controversial. And that is that you need to go the extra level. If you're not already uh, involved, get involved in politics. While a lot can be achieved in government, while a lot can be achieved in civil society, and I'll talk about that in a moment, government still holds the ace in terms of capacity and resources to bring the social goods to the largest numbers. Besides, besides, you know, being deciders in, instead of pressure groups at the table in policy formulation are hugely different positions. The consummation of our great ideas uh, to transform our societies ultimately will depend on, quote, those politicians, as we sometimes derisively describe them. I was once where you were. I was part of several civil society groups growing up. I joined the first, I joined the first civil society group that I was a part of when I was 24. I was teaching at the time, I started teaching at the time at the University of Lagos. I also co-founded the anti-corruption group Integrity and then Convention on Business Integrity, which is still alive and well today and they function out of Abuja and Lagos. At the time, we published a weekly bulletin called Scrutiny to expose official corruption. And that was during the Abacha era, and there was you know, quite a bit of uh, trouble there, and even just trying to get uh, this kind of information across. And we got into all sorts of trouble and uh, all sorts of skirmishes with law enforcement. I was chair of the Legal Research and Development Center, where we worked on civil rights issues and legal defense for the poor. We did a couple of you know, uh, legal defense initiatives. We got funding from donors and all of that, and tried to do the best we could. But if I count the number of those that were able to reach, maybe, maybe in the, the years, maybe about a hundred or so. So we achieved some good. 
But compared to the scale of the problem, it was really a little. But in 1999 came politics and I was appointed Attorney General of Lagos. With that platform, we took on the corruption in the Lagos judiciary and we set a model. We, 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 we reviewed the issues of corruption in the Lagos judiciary and how to address it from remuneration to discipline and all of that. And we're able to put in place, you know, uh, a, 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 an anti-corruption framework that has lasted several years. And I'll just give you a, a quick example of what happened in Lagos at the time. Now, we did a survey of legal practitioners who were in, um, who, who practiced in the courts in Lagos. And we asked the question, about integrity of uh, Lagos judicial officers at the time. 89% of them said that the judiciary was notoriously corrupt. And those are notoriously corrupt, 89%. That was 1999. So we, we knew that we had our work cut out for us. We then decided what were the real issues. Lagos judges at the time were paid 46,000 naira a month. Not enough, of course, we even you know, pay uh, school fees or anything. So we had to look at remuneration and we took decisive steps on remuneration. The one fear that many judges have is that they would not have a home to live when they, when they leave office because you're not allowed to practice law once you leave office as a judge. So Lagos State Government, as a matter of policy, decided that we will provide a home for judges and that will be their home and they can take that, that they can take it away with them when they when they leave office. A big you know house, four bedroom house, uh, boys' quarters, and all of that in the place of their choice, Ikoi, uh, Leki, or Ikeja, depending on which they chose. And then we took to the question of discipline. If a report is made, we process it immediately to the NJC. As a consequence of the steps that we took, twenty-two judges, uh, twenty-two magistrates lost their jobs. They were sacked. For corruption. That was the first time in the history of the state that anyone had ever been sacked for corruption, anyone at all, or had ever even been reprimanded. Three judges lost their jobs also. But then when we did that survey again with the World Bank in 2007, asking the same questions about Lagos judges in the high courts of Lagos, zero percent, zero percent said that judges were corrupt, zero. Now, it's not that the judges uh, suddenly had a change of heart, but we put in place a system that guaranteed not just remuneration, but also discipline. But the point, the, the, the reason why I make this point is that states, after what we did in Lagos, copied that very example, the same example. So many states improved remuneration and improved a wide variety of things. But the point that I'm making is that it took public office to be able to get the scale of change that was required to make a difference. It took public office. Without public office, I would have remained in the, a pressure group activist. I would have done some nice things. I would have been involved. As a matter of fact, I was also a fellow, a road track fellow. I would have done all of that kind of stuff. But I wouldn't have been able to make the change or the changes that my country required. The second thing we did in, in Lagos at the time was that we, we established the Citizens' Rights Department. For the first time in the history of, of, of our country, a department was established in the Ministry of Justice for the rights of citizens. And that was important because the Ministry of Justice is not just a ministry of law and order. It's a ministry for justice for the people. And that, mini that ministry, uh, that department, had what was called uh, the Office of the Public Defender, a concept which we borrowed from, uh, from, from some U.S. states, and were able to do the defense, legal defense. Government provided funding for thousands of, of Lagosians, thousands, literally thousands. But the more interesting part of that story is that almost every state in Nigeria adopted the Citizens' Rights Department adopted the Office of the Public Defender. Now, go back to when I was an activist working in the legal research and uh, the re legal research and development uh, organization where we were trying to do some work on legal defense. 
Yes, we did some. We did a few. But we certainly couldn't achieve uh, the scale that we achieved, uh, were able to achieve in public service. So, the, the, simply the point I'm making is that African nations, and especially our nation, cannot afford to have its best minds and our most committed social activists remain only in the civil space. You know, we simply can't afford it. You guys have to get involved. You've got to get involved in politics. You've got to be in a position to make the difference on the scale that is required. You've got to be able to do that. And, and of course, there are many who will not be involved in politics, but those that are inclined should. And I think it's absolutely important. Of course, there will be many, many challenges, even in the way of, of getting heard in politics. But I want to say to you that that for me is, you know, should be an objective that you should set for yourselves to get involved at whatever level of, of, uh, of, of politics so that we, you can make uh, the kind of difference in the scale that, that you're required to make the difference.